miss our, our opening, I guess. So good to have you all today for our Zoom class. Today we're going to be drawing with pencil and ink. So if you have a sharpie, we have fat sharpies and we have thin sharpies. And for the first drawing, you can use a wider tipped sharpie, but for the second one, the more advanced drawing, you're gonna want your thin sharpie. And if you don't have a thin sharpie, um, the kind that has the little tip, if you don't have that, you could just use a regular ink pen, whatever you have in your house, or a black marker that has kind of a small tip, that would be fine too. But first, we're just gonna use a pencil and paper. So we are going to be drawing some mushrooms today and some snails and we'll see, we'll see where we go from there. So mushrooms and snails are pretty cool. And you see a lot of them this time of year starting to pop up out of the ground. Snails actually come out of the ground just like the mushrooms because sometimes they kind of hibernate underground. Slugs do that too, and they kind of lay their eggs down there, it keeps them warm in the winter. So they all kind of pop up in the springtime. So I figure mushrooms and snails, they're a spring, they're a spring thing. So we're keeping with our spring theme. And I wonder if any of you have ever seen a fairy ring of mushrooms. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a fairy ring of mushrooms. I have. Cool. I I've have seen billions. Life. Very cool. Um, so fairy rings are kind of magical because they don't happen very often and no one really knows why they happen. But once in a while, a bunch of mushrooms will grow in a perfect circle. Just all by themselves. No one planted them that way. They just naturally grow in a perfect circle. And long ago, people used to believe that if you stepped into the middle of the circle of mushrooms, you will be transported to fairyland. So mushrooms are kind of magical because of old stories like that. Now, before we get, go any further, I wanna remind you of two things. First of all, Maxtivity is an awesome place where we can all go and do art. And if we want Maxtivity to keep operating and stay open, then we need donations. So if you have, if you have the heart to give some donations to Maxtivity, we would really appreciate that. And you can go to our Facebook page, I believe, and see how to give donations there. And also, every Tuesday we post another YouTube video with how-to art projects that are a lot of fun. So you might want to check that out too. Just go to go to YouTube and type in Maxtivity Art. So far we have three videos on Maxtivity art that I have done. And I think Lori has put some videos on as well. So you might want to check that out. Okay, so our first mushroom today is going to be a simple one because we always like to start with a fairly simple project. Not, not too simple, it's going to be cool, but everybody should be able to do this one. So the first thing you want to do is take your pencil I'm using a pen so you can see what I'm doing, but that's kind of bad because I can't erase. And you're gonna to wanna to do some erasing later. So if, don't use your pen for this part, use your pencil. And we're gonna draw kind of a, kind of an oval shape. So this is the top of our big mushroom. We're doing our big mushroom first. Then I have a curved top and then it kind of, comes around like this. It's almost like a lemon. Almost a lemon. Not a perfect oval, not a perfect circle, somewhere in between. So make that shape first with your pencil on your paper. And then we're going to do another oval below this one. So it's underneath and it's smaller. So this one's going to be kind of like that. Excuse me, I keep sniffing. I have allergies. And then we're going to do another more circular one underneath this one. 
and kind of a little lower than that one. So right here, like that. So you have three kind of oval circle shapes on your page. If they're not exactly in those spots, that's okay. All right, now this, this middle mushroom has a little lip that goes up and you can see underneath into the underside of the mushroom. So that's what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take our pencil right about here and we're gonna do a curvy mark that goes up and swoops around, kind of looks like a spoon or a wave. Goes up and like that, kind of a yin and a yang. So it starts slow and it curves up and then it comes back down. So make that curve that kind of divides that oval in half. Okay, now the stem of the big mushroom is really fat. So we're gonna start right about here and make a line that goes diagonal down to there and stops right there. It goes behind that one. That's one side of our stem. And the other side of our stem is gonna start way up here and come down, swoop down like this to that one. That's all we're drawing of the stem right now is those two lines. They kind of look like two cherries hanging down from a bell. Kind of looks like a bell. So let's give this little mushroom a stem too. It's also going to have a wide stem. So we're going to make a line coming down like that that kind of curves at the bottom. And a line coming down like that that kind of curves at the bottom. That's a really big stem. Maybe you want yours quite that wide. And then for this one, the smaller one, we're going to do the same thing. A line that comes down and kind of curves. It comes down and kind of curves. We're going to have a grouping of three little mushrooms when we're done. Now up here underneath this mushroom, you want to erase right to about right there, erase that line. Because instead, we're going to have some lines swooping out and coming up, kind of like the spokes in a wheel going out from that point or like the underside of your umbrella, some lines going up to show the underside of the mushroom. You can put as many or as few lines as you want. They all kind of start there and go down out to the sides. And then we'll put a few over here too, coming from this point out, maybe just two. And then there's gonna be a little line going across here. So you want to erase that line and instead have your swooping lines. I can't erase them because I'm using Sharpie. If I use pencil, you won't be able to see it. It won't be dark enough. Okay, it's starting to look pretty cool. Let's put a little grass down here beneath our mushrooms. So you could just put, are you going to try to erase it? No, I don't have white eyes. It doesn't work. White. For grass, you could just have some little pointy, maybe go straight for a bit and then some longer than others, some short, some long. There's our grass underneath our mushrooms. And I think our mushrooms, oh, we want it, yeah, we want to erase this line right here, of course. Erase that line so it's not going right through the stem of our mushroom. This line right here, I gotta erase that. All right, I would like to put some spots on this mushroom. Now, before I do that, I wanna remind you that if you wanna say something, you can unmute yourself or there's a option, there's a raise your hand option 
at the bottom of the screen, I believe. And if you push on that, I should see it pop up in your square and I can call on you. So feel free. Okay, so let's put some spots on our mushroom. Now some of our spots are gonna be just circles, some big, some little, placed randomly around, but some are gonna be half circles because they're going right off the edge of the mushroom. We might put a little, a little lip right there if you want, maybe to make it look like the mushroom has a little curve right there to it. So you can put just a few circles and spots in different places on your mushroom and maybe put some down on your little mushrooms too. Just however many you want. Some are big, some are little. Variety is good. Some go off the edge, so they're just like a little half circle. And you should have a nice little grouping of three mushrooms. Now I have, I don't very often see mushrooms with spots, but when I do, I get really excited because they're so cool. And I have seen red mushrooms with white spots growing in Oregon. You see those in storybooks sometimes and you think, do those really exist? But they do, because I have seen them. And it's so cool when you see one. So you might wanna later color your mushroom red and leave the spots white. And the stem probably white too. That's up to you though. We are gonna add a snail to this picture in just a second, but I wanna make sure that everyone has caught up with their mushrooms. Oh, I'm getting a thumbs up. Good. If you have caught up with your mushroom, give me a thumbs up. Great idea. I think we're all just about there. Almost. Okay, so this next snail, the snail we're going to do is pretty easy. It's the most basic snail that I could think of. And it starts with a circle. So this is going to be the snail's shell. So if you want a tiny snail, make a tiny circle. If you want a big snail, make a big circle. So I think the snail should be over here crawling towards the mushrooms. But I suppose if you wanted to put your snail on top of the mushroom, you could do that too. So I'm gonna put my snail on the ground crawling towards the mushrooms. I'm just gonna put a circle like that. And then I want my snail looking towards the mushrooms, facing the mushrooms. So I'm going to put his head over here. So the way I make his head is I start at the bottom of the circle and I come out along the ground just a little bit and then I curve up and back down. It kind of looks like the thumb on a mitten. That's his head. We'll put a face on him later. And for his tail, his tail would just be right along the ground too. Just right here where the head meets the shell. I would go across there and I would start here and make a little tail for my snail. Just a straight line going out and then a little diagonal line going back up. Starting to look like a snail, huh? So, Snails, I'm not sure they actually have eyes, but they have those feelers on top of their heads. And we're gonna, we're gonna make kind of a cartoon snail. So he's gonna have eyes on top of those feelers. So I'm just gonna put two little lines on top of his head and then a circle on top of each one. And you don't have to do this, but if you want to, you can put a little pupil in each one and make kind of a cartoon snail and give him a little smile. So of course, snails have that curvy shell. So we're gonna do a curvy shell. So we're gonna start with our pencil down here at the bottom. And we're gonna make kind of a swirling up shape that kind of parallels the shell. And then it curves in and it goes like that. So it's just kind of a swirly shape. It's kind of just like a, spiral, up 
and around, almost like a number nine. Up and around. And there we have our snail. And I'm going to have my, he's just floating in space right now. So I need to have the ground go a little farther underneath my snail. So he's part of the whole picture. Want you to focus on is this video, not the one with my face in it that you can still see. You can see our really high tech setup we have up here. <laughs> but we're going to look at this. So this is a picture of mushrooms and a snail. Maybe I can get it a little closer. That was done with pen, with Sharpie. So you see that it has a little different look to it than a picture done with just pencil. So what you probably want to do is draw your picture in pencil first and then go over it in Sharpie when you're done in case you make a mistake. But I think I am going to go over, I'm just going to do it with pen. And I actually am cheating a little bit today because we drew this in advance. But I am going to, I kind of traced it roughly so that I could get it all perfectly. So you can follow along and see what I'm doing because I'll be doing it in pen. And I didn't want to do it in pen and mess it all up. All right, so first thing we're going to do is the real tall mushroom in the background. So just look at the shape first before you start drawing. It's kind of a little mountain shape. Kind of a little mountain shape or um, uh, a cloud shape kind of. So can you go ahead and make a shape like this on your paper up near the top corner like I did? So it's just kind of a kind of goes up like a little hill or a little cloud and comes down and then it's kind of flat on the bottom and then it kind of curves back up to that side. It doesn't have to be exactly like that because not all mushrooms are different, right? Yours is a little different. That's okay. We're doing this in pencil first, right? So now we're going to do the underside of the mushroom. We're going to divide it in half the top from the bottom. So put your pen right about here, or your pencil, I mean, and curve around like that. Just a little curve right there. Can you see that? So it's not exactly touching the edge here. Kind of curves around, and then it continues on. It waves a little bit like a wave, and it comes down and up. And then when I get close to this edge, I'm going to do the same thing where I get close to the edge. But I don't touch the edge and I curve around like that. So I didn't go all the way around, I just went part way. I might continue though, I'm going to skip a little space and I'm going to put a little line right there. That just shows there's kind of a little, a little lip around the edge of the mushroom. Now we want our stem of the mushroom to be right about here. I'm going to put a little curved line right there. That marks the top of my stem. I hope they can see this. It looks hard to see to me, but maybe because I'm looking at a small screen. All right, so now we are going to do a long stem that comes all the way down to right about here. It might be a good idea, actually. Let's put a little okay. line down. Where we want the bottom of our stem to be. I'm going to put a little curved line curving up like a little smile right down here where I want the bottom of my stem to be. So it's going to be that long. Now I don't want to make a perfectly straight stem. I want it to curve gracefully. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to go down and kind of slowly curve out and then curve back in to meet my smile at the bottom. It's just a nice, long, slightly curved line. And then the other side of my stem is going to parallel that, but get a little fatter at the bottom. 
So we'll start here and we'll parallel that other line and curve with that other line. And then when we get to here, we start to get a little wider, widen out a little bit more so that the bottom of the mushroom is a little wider than the top of the mushroom stem. And this mushroom has kind of a uh, little something like a little flap growing over the top of it. So at the top of my stem, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, almost like there's candle wax dripping down off the top of my stem, almost like the top of a birthday candle after it's been burning for a bit, it's a little melted. So I'm putting a little kind of a and then I would erase those lines inside if I was using pencil, but I'm not. But you can erase the straight lines and just leave the outside little cap that hangs down there. So underneath the mushroom cap, there's those little, um, I, does anybody know what those are called? I can't remember what they're called. They're kind of like gills underneath the mushroom. We're going to draw those and they they come out from the center like the spokes on a bike so we're going to start in the center and they're not perfectly straight they're curved they curve out let's do this side first so some curvy lines that curve out and down kind of like a rainbow but they go to the edge of the mushroom and they start here and curve down to the edge or kind of like water shooting out of a hose so make yourself some lines under the cap of the mushroom. I think we lost a few people. Yeah, some people are leaving. And these lines here almost go straight up, but there's still a little bit of a curve to those right on the top of the stem. And then on the other side, it's just like this side. We curve away from the stem, kind of like water coming out of hose, like that. And one of the cool things with pen is that you can shade, but you're not using a pencil and smearing it like you do with pencil to create shadow. You're using hatching and hatching are just lines. So instead of scribbling it all in to create shade, we're just going to do some hatching. And that is like little lines that kind of come down like this. And then cross hatching, you put another line going through it like that. It's kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. So I'm going to put some little lines going down like this to create the illusion of shadow there. And then I'm going to have lines going through it like a tic-tac-toe board. And that kind of creates a, a feeling of shadow. So you could do that now with your pencil and later with your pen. There's a few more over here. Some are short, some are long. Shadow going through. And I want to curve some of those so that my mushroom looks curved. Let's do the same thing on the stem. We're going to do it few lines, not all the way down. Some are long, some are short. All the way down to the bottom. It kind of looks like a ruler. And then maybe some long lines going the other way. So we're doing some hatching. Maybe a little bit at the bottom here. Some more lines, some long, some short, kind of like centimeters or inches marks on a ruler and some lines that kind of curve with the shape of the stem. I'm gonna put some little hatching lines up here too. You can always do this later when you are going over it in pen. Create some shadow. And you might wanna color it with your colored pencils when you're done too and create shadow that way. I did mention that we were gonna use colored pencils today, but I think that might be on your own after class. So we are going to move on to the shorter mushroom. Remember there was a tall mushroom 
Then there was a shorter mushroom, and there were two tiny mushrooms. And they all kind of like different kinds of mushrooms. I thought it'd be good because there's so many different kinds of mushrooms to try drawing some different styles of mushrooms. So we'll draw this one next. So to start out with that one, it's kind of a potato shape. We're going to make a shape like a potato. And then we're going to divide the top of the mushroom from the bottom of the mushroom by making a curved line like this kind of the shape of a hot dog right there inside that potato. And, and then we're going to do the stem very much like we did this one, but we're going to have it curve the other direction. So I think I'll put a little line down here at the bottom, another little smile where I want the bottom of my stem to be. And right kind of right centered below the big top of the mushroom. And then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to make a line that swoops slightly in and curves back out and meets the smile. Looks like a fish hook kind of, doesn't it? And then on the other side, I'll have a line that parallels that one until it gets here and then it gets wider. It widens out and meets the smile. So it's wider at the bottom and skinnier at the top. How's everybody doing? Those of you who have stayed with us, doing pretty good, huh? So the underside, oh good, the underside of this mushroom is a little trickier. We're not just going to do lines that go out. We're going to start kind of in the center and make long swoops like that. So there's swoops under this mushroom. Kind of looks like petals from a flower, doesn't it? It's almost like you're doing petals from a flower and they all kind of center right here in the center of the cap. So they go all the way out. They get longer and longer as you go farther and farther out away from the stem. The ones right next to the stem are short and they get longer as you get farther away. You do that on both sides. Now, later when you use your pen to trace over this, you're going to want to make this part dark with little strokes and maybe just put a few strokes in I'm just showing you don't do this now I'm just showing you right now what you'll do later so you might want to go over in pen first go over the flower like petals that you made and then go back with your Sharpie and create the illusion of those little gills by making the empty spaces almost completely dark with hatches. And then just a few hatches in the flower petal shapes that you made. And that'll create a really neat effect. So this mushroom also has a little thing underneath of it kind of like this, it's kind of squiggly on top and on the bottom. It's kind of, kind of like, um, just so you can see better what I'm doing, it's kind of like that, squiggle, 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 squiggle on the top and the bottom here. And that connects the stem to the cap of the mushroom. And for this one, we would want to do some rounded hatch lines, rounded that round with the curve of the mushroom. So let's put a few hatch lines going um, vertically and then a few going horizontally, some long, some short. 
the curve with the mushroom. Create some shape to that mushroom. And then for the stem, we would do what we did before with some long and some short, just coming straight out like marks on a ruler all the way down to the bottom. And then some long lines that curve with the stem going through those. And it creates the feeling of shadow without actually smudging with graphite. Whew, this is a lot of work, isn't it? We still have two, well, three mushrooms to go. I think we'll just do, maybe we'll just do one more mushroom. Let's, let's, we'll see how far we get. Okay, we're going to do a small mushroom now. We're going to do this one. That's our next mushroom. So that one has almost a triangle shape for a top. But it's not a pointy triangle, it's a curved triangle. It has curved corners, kind of an arrowhead shape, or actually kind of looks like the head of a fish to me, fish head shape. So make your fish head shape mushroom cap right underneath of the round one that we just did, the potato shape mushroom cap. And this one has a funny little hood underneath of it, right there. It hangs down. And then its stem is a little skinnier than that. And its stem just curves down and stops right about parallel on the same level as this one, because they're right next to each other. So it's a little curved. And it stops right about on the same level as this one. You know, I think when you go over these later with Sharpie, I think it would be good to use a wide Sharpie like this one to go over them all, and then the thin one to do your hatching. I think that would give you the best effect. So for this one, we're going to do some hatching, some lines that kind of curve with the mushroom, and then some lines going down again like we did before, maybe a few over here, and maybe just some lines going straight down underneath to create a little shadow. And then we'll put our little lines on the side, and that kind of creates the shadow on that mushroom. All right, let's see. How about we create some ground so our mushrooms aren't just floating in space. So I'm just gonna do, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It can just be kind of suggested. That's kind of a lightning bolt. I'm gonna do kind of a lightning bolt of grass and then a few little pieces of grass, some, some going one way, some going another way. And then maybe another little straight piece of ground that's just flat. That just gives some variety to your ground so it's not just a straight line or zigzaggy grass that all looks the same because that gets kind of boring. So some grass goes this way and some goes that way. And some is just a little dot, just a little, just a little line. Are you all ready for the snail? You know, in some countries they eat snails, but I have never done that. And I don't think I ever really want to. Have any of you ever eaten snails? <laughs> okay, so for our snail, we're gonna start again, kind of like we did our other snail with a, with a circle. I'm gonna put my snail up here on top of the mushroom. That's how it was in the previous picture. I noticed some of you did that in your first picture. It's kind of a fun thing to do. So let's make a circle up here. I'm gonna have to modify mine later, but I'll just do that for now. And then we want our snail to be sticking his head up. We want him to be sticking his head up and stretching his little feelers. So let's make a little line, a little, curved C-shaped line kind of that goes up right about from that point in our 
circle, and goes up and curves back. And then we have his little, little feeler gets a little bigger at the top and then comes back down. Let's try that much first. And then it's kind of like a V. We make kind of a V coming off of for the other feeler. So we have kind of a V and a C. And then we'll make a little larger on the end and coming back down. And then they have that strange little feeler on the bottom too, don't they? So we have another curve shape this way. It almost is starting to look like an X. Have that come down there and meet the mushroom. And let's put a tail on our snail after you've got that part. So that's almost kind of like an X shape up there with three little feelers coming out. Now down here for the tail, we'll just start right about here and just go down. That's an easy one. Just a curved line, a little bit of a curve in it, kind of goes swoops down and swoops up a little bit again. Now, most snail shells aren't a perfect circle, right? There's this little spot right here that kind of opens up for the snail to come out of. So you might want to add that. So it kind of curves towards the head of the snail and then comes back down and meets kind of like a little igloo opening for him to come in and out of his shell. So you might want to put that right there. And then we're going to do another swirl on our snail shell. So I think maybe you want to start in the middle this time. Let's try that. Let's start in the middle and let's curve around and around and down. I like that better. It's easier to get it just right. So you start in the middle and you swirl around, you get a little bit bigger and then right down to the edge. There's really just one big swirl kind of. Looks like a um, lollipop, kind of. If you wanted to get real fun funky with your snail later, you could put designs on his shell. Like spots and zigzags and stripes or whatever you want on your snail all kinds of designs, and then you could color them all different colors. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? You'd have a really magical snail. We're not gonna give this one a cartoon face because we want him to look a little more realistic. But we might give him a little shading. So maybe a little bit of hatching on the snail here and there, make him look a little more um, shadowy. Maybe a little hatching. Well, if you're gonna decorate your shell, I don't think you wanna do too much hatching on it, but because it might get in the way of your designs. But um, you could do some hatching around the edges of the snail. Okay, I think I'm gonna draw one more mushroom down here while you're finishing your snail. This is very much like the other mushrooms we did before, so it's pretty easy. So if you don't want to do this one, you don't have to, but I'm just going to do it. You can keep working on your snail if you want or add that mushroom later. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of grass down here so my mushrooms aren't just floating in space. All right, I think that we should all color our pictures after we've inked them. And I would love to see them on Facebook. Last time, I didn't see that. A couple of people posted on Facebook their fishes, but I was hoping to see more. So 
how about everybody takes time now to take their Sharpies, take your wide Sharpie to outline the big lines, and then take your thin Sharpie to do the hatching and the shading, and maybe add a little more definition up here, maybe a little hatching up, a little shading up here with your thin Sharpie. And then everyone can send their pictures into Facebook or just show them to us next time if you don't have Facebook. Maybe you can okay. show your pictures to us next time we all get together. Okay. Hi. I think that's good for today. Anybody have anything they want to say before we sign off? Nope. <laughs> I just want to say it's so good to see all of you. Keep on creating. Stay healthy and um, yeah, be sure and share your pictures so we can all be inspired by you. So thank you, Miss Julie, for joining with us today. Thanks everyone for coming. I hope to see you next week. Thank you, Miss Julie. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, creating.